Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hopped Ones, the beer drinking podcasty but live recorded show inspired by Hot Ones, um, hosted by Sean Evans, the uh, wing challenge eating show. Um, both Sean Evans and Kevin Smith could not be here today, but my guest actually brought his own beer, so anyone that does that can be on the show. So with that, I'll introduce my guest, Dan. Take it away. Hi, um, Dan Williams. Uh, known Chris for a real long time through my... Uh brother uh mike over the at, colonel yeah uh, at umass lowell and so yeah and uh, a few years back i discovered following this guy on facebook that hey he likes good beer like me and it uh it's worked out pretty good for us so far yeah, and you actually started a group that you're actually the head of right the uh, rogues of sobriety rogues of sobriety we're a little over 300 strong at this point on uh facebook and I don't, I'm terrible about doing the other social media things for it, but yes, we're on Facebook and uh, people post about the uh, beers they enjoy and, you know, what's coming up or what's going on. With cool. Uh, before we get into the episode, um, speaking of the Rogues of Sobriety, I'd like to dedicate today's episode to Adam. Yes, Adam Lyko. Uh, unfortunately, lost him about five years ago. Really, really good guy. One of the first members of the Rogues of Sobriety and made this great yep. shirt that uh, our host is rocking right here. It's so. pretty freaking awesome. And Dan's got, you know... A whole bunch of different things with this on it, right? Yeah. You have some pretty cool stuff, actually. <laughs> yeah, stickers and um, koozies, sweatshirts, a couple different uh, t-shirt designs. So It's awesome. All right, so with that, we'll get right into it. Um, today's episode is brought to you by Foul Mouth Brewing, which Dan is a giant fan of. And um, they actually uh, gave Dan some beers for us to try out today. So, Dan, give us a little bit of a rundown about Foul Mouth before we start our real show. Sure. So, Foul Mouth, um, it's run by my friend Craig and his wife, Julia. Um, uh, Bill and Logan are two of the brewers that work with him as well. Uh, they're in South Portland, Maine. Uh, they've been open for three years, uh, just over three years now. Uh, I pretty much hang out with them every Thursday evening. Uh, I go there. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the term hash house harriers. Um, you've told me about hashing before. Yeah, so. so they're basically a running drinking club, and Craig is the head of our particular group, so it's great that we started his brewery and end our run at his brewery, so we get to enjoy beers, and because of that, I've been lucky enough to get to uh, help out with some labeling before. And oh, that's awesome. And getting to taste a few things that maybe aren't quite out for everybody just yet, so it works that's, out pretty sweet. That's awesome, dude. Um, cool, man. So Falmouth Brewing actually uh, is the first beer we have here from Falmouth? Yeah, I think we got the first in the lineup right here are uh, Falmouth beers to start with. Um, so the first one is actually one I have don't think I've actually ever tried. Uh, tried. It's Soul Rad, which says it's like the a name. Uh, dry hopped pale ale uh, with main grown malts, uh, 5.2% ABV. Awesome. So I'm going to start the timer. And um, the first uh, round, I break it up into five-minute rounds for each beer, okay. which we can go over slightly. But, you know, the idea is to <laughs> keep us talkers <laughs> reined in, if you will, and keep it interesting for these folks out there. Um, so I'm going to start the timer. Um, and this is like the intro. We did the intro kind of roughly, but, um, you know, I was going to introduce you as the Mad Hatter of Oz is here today, MC Hatter, if you will. Yeah. And I figured you might want to <laughs> tell some people about uh, about that portion of your life. Uh, so, <laughs> cheers. Cheers, sir. Um, oh, it smells freaking great. Oh, it tastes really good, too. I really enjoy that one. Good job, guys. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, um, damn. Uh, but yeah, thank so, you, Maine. <laughs> hey, we make a lot of really good beers mm. on our way. So yeah, um, MC Hatter, uh, me and my brother Mike, as I mentioned, was the one that introduced me to this guy. Uh, we just thought it would be really funny to make our own rap group, mostly because I was stupidly a fan of the Insane Clown Posse at one point in my life, and my brother thought they were ridiculous and said I can do better stuff than that, and I challenged him to do so. And he goes, well, why don't you do it with me? And we decided to make our own rap song. We did four songs and one music video directed by our other friend, Mateo. And, uh, yeah, so I have, I, every once in a while that comes up, somebody will bring that up to embarrass me because I have not that's kind that of, that, in a long That's time. kind of the point. Wasn't there a video for um, the, uh, the slip and slide one, too? We wanted to do one. We've never I, actually... In my head, there was a music video for I'm that, and I don't it, know why. I think it was just so invocative that, obviously, you're just like, yes, I can see all of this. Yeah. Well, that was called, like, MOK's Fifth Symphony or something? Fourth like, Symphony. Fourth Symphony, because... <laughs> Blinging booty bitches better be at my side. Before I pause some vodka down my slip and slide. slide. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, I gotta, gotta embarrass you a little bit, right? This is my show, damn it. Mm. This is really friggin' good. Um, yeah. So they actually are really new to canning, too. Like, they just canned their first stuff in June. They've been pretty much draft only. So uh, they don't have their own canning line, but they do with what a lot of the uh, local breweries do, where they have a, it's a big truck that literally comes in, sets up in the morning. A canning truck. A canning truck. They, so kind of like a paper shredder truck that comes yeah. to a company, but it comes yeah, and does all the Yeah, they set up uh, and literally will just do whatever in order to like make this happen they have to snake like a conveyor belt kind of system all around like some of these tiny things i was actually talking with the boys over at um uh, is it east regiment brewing yeah isn't that place great very good i like shout out to east regiment in salem we'll be stopping by there to get some beers for this show at some point i, I imagine love, i gotta say they i think just did canning and they were telling me about that they've been trying to work out the details with the canning truck to come in because their stuff is in the basement of that old building in salem so they're like we don't know how we can get all of that in there to make that happen, to get to the production tanks and all of that. But that was, uh, sounds oh, like it's going to yeah. be an interesting time for those guys. To East, East Regiment is so cool. And, you know, to get, we're recording this in October. So East Regiment, I hope, is um, making a killing right uh, now because they are right in the heart of Salem. Dude, and it's October. It's got to be hand over fist on that one. So, And we have a Salem thing here to try at the end. So, all right, yeah. <laughs> far from the tree. So. Um, we have a couple uh, minutes in the first segment left. I wanted to bring up, you were a guest on the Talkbuster podcast. Yes. Uh, you were one of my first, actually. Episode and you were, four. and I think you were my first that was not um, a Blockbuster employee. Yeah. Um, Movie so, gallery, man. So you came to the uh, the live show. Um, mm-hmm. Tell the people that haven't watched it yet how good it is. Seriously, so much fun. Um, <laughs> it was one of those things. I'm not honestly just saying that because I'm friends with this guy. It was legitimately a really fun experience and... I have been literally trying to sell everyone to listen to this. I'm like, if you've ever went to a video store, I'm like, if you loved the movie Clerks, I'm like, this is, to me, the kind of thing it reminds me of is just listening to the fun stories of customers or the hijinks that occurred in or around your store. It's like, to me, I'm like, yeah, I think that's a great way to... That's awesome. Sell that up. I'm actually going to hold off right quote wrong movie for the third beer so we can talk about um, Clerks in the next segment because if there's something you haven't heard, but we're going to we're gonna preempt and hold off on that. So, um... Man, these beers are awesome. So I was going to say, Foulmouth, you know, outside of what you've brought me here, what's the most interesting thing they've made that you've tried? Um, Since this is a show about strange beers, yeah, and we're um, starting fairly normal and moving into the, oh so, God, oh God, why <laughs> section down here at the end. But um. Um, So one of the ones, the most unique ones they did was um, called Sea Lab. A throwback to the fun, you know, um, not she better not take my stash. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Whoops, start in your neck. But they, um, it's, and we're not going to even preempt what we're talking about. We're just going to let you guys figure that one out. We assume you know. It's, the internet's there for a reason. Um, but uh, they brewed a chocolate stout that was brewed with seaweed. Uh huh. And <laughs> the flavor on it was very, very good. Um, Probably kind of like what an oyster stout ends up doing, that yeah, briny. Yeah. Um, but the flavor, I think they had originally done it for, there was. Um, for Portland Beer Week, they do what they call the Pro-Am Challenge every year. Keep going. And uh, what they do is basically they team up a local home brewer with one of the local breweries. And uh, my understanding is Craig, before he owned Foulmouth, was an avid home brewer. And he literally got the option to team up with one of the local breweries. And they decided, this will be a really cool idea. I think it's an awesome idea. And honestly, it was very, very good. The situation is, I uh, and uh, from what I've heard... I think Craig would agree with me, is unfortunately that it doesn't sound like it's a beer that holds up. It's one you've got to drink fresh. It's not something ah. you can age. It just... Well, kind of like, um, what's their names? Um, is it Stone that does the beers that are intentionally made yeah, to, to, enjoy to, by. to enjoy by day, and they're intentionally made to go bad really quickly, so they're drank real quickly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that can be an interesting thing if you do it right, but as a brewery, I can imagine that's a rough... Well, um, especially small brewery. Well, I think the situation is a lot of people look at it as it's a stout, and most stouts are a stout you can sit on. IPAs are usually, though you don't age because the hop, you're going to lose that hop character the longer they sit. Hop, hops are the fake thing that people think goes skunky just because they stop tasting good. That's, yeah. that is where really... Exactly. So. Cool, man. All right, well, we'll start our next round because I, I don't know if you've heard about this, but our next beer, um, I'll let you talk again because it's one that you brought. Um, so, Mr. Giggles, it's a golden strong ale, 10.5%, or actually just 10% alcohol. Woohoo! We're already getting into it. All right. So, um, <laughs> as I actually mentioned earlier, um, that they are uh, a hash, uh, I do hashing or hash house harriers, which is a running drinking club. 
and uh, part of that whole thing is when you've been doing it for a while, you get named. You get kind of a fun, goofy, usually generally pretty inappropriate name. Oh, I can imagine. Um, so, um, unfortunately, Mr. Giggles, I never got the chance to meet this gentleman. Uh, Tim Durbin was his uh, name. But he unfortunately took his own life. Um, oh, and that's rough. What they, My understanding was what they ended up doing was his parents went to Craig and Bill with all of uh, Tim's homebrew stuff and were like, hey, we know you guys homebrew. Would you like to have this? So they literally took his stuff and then looked at like the ingredients and stuff that he kind of had and like, well, what can we brew with what we have left? Oh, the and last they, will and testament of Mr. Giggles. And, I, I like it. And so they realized they could make a golden strong ale based on what they had. And so they had made that just for friends as a kind of a homebrew thing. And now they dedicate this to him and sales from this particular beer actually go to the National Suicide Prevention. Hey, cheers to that. So, so let's take a first sip and wow, that, that's amazing. Oh, hot damn. It doesn't drink like a 10%. It's an extremely no. It ding. drinks, it, it, you know what, it, it drinks like um, not even a triple. It drinks like a 5 or 6% Belgian white. Yeah. And, and this is going to catch up on you. I yeah. Can, ooh. It's one of those things that they always warn, <laughs> have a tendency to warn people. Oh, like, that's delicious. Yeah. It's it's one of those particular beers that it's just like, hey, be careful with this one because it's going to go down way too smooth for something That thing's going to kick yours. That's a good camping beer when you're going to do a lot of sitting. Uh, 100%. <laughs> um, so the thing I wanted to bring up is, have you heard anything about Clerks 3? I, ju- I have literally read nothing, but I saw the headline that it's been approved. Okay. So I'm S- excited. So Kevin Smith has come out and said that so this is not like, you know, a, a, a mystery. It's not something he's trying to hide. What the film is about. Are you ready to get fucking chills? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So people uh, that are fans of me know that I love Kevin Smith. Um, he's worked he, he's worked out in that in Jane Silent Bob reboot, he's going back to like his older movies and kind of fixing some of the things that as he's grown up. He said he goes, he fully believes in death of the author, so he doesn't want to change his movies, but he mm-hmm. likes having, you know, some, like he's going to have a Chasing Amy thing that he feels kind of fixes kind of the gross way that he left things that were very progressive then, not so good now. Yeah, um, and, and, and things like that. So Clerks 3. So he recently had a heart attack, which is why he fast tracking and Silent Bob reboot. Mm-hmm. Clerks 3 is about Randall having a heart attack in the hospital coming to the realization that he hasn't done anything with his life. So kind of like the Dante realization of Clerks 2. Yeah. Him and Dante make Clerks. <laughs> All right, I'm on board with this plan. How freaking brilliant is that? That is awesome. He, he talked about, he said it's kind of coming full circle because he got really pissed off at how bad of a time people, the critics and everyone had with Zack and Miri. Yeah. And I loved it, but you know, and so he's, that was his movie where he was kind of like laying like his heart in his sleeve about making clerks. Mm-hmm. And he said, no one saw it, so I'm going to try again. This is kind of the thing. And just literally have my characters from clerks make clerks. All right. And I think that's a really cool, if you're going to cap the Isk universe, mm-hmm. that's the way you do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? I, I think that's awesome. And whether or not he caps it or not. So I, I thought that, that actually made me like, like make my hair stand on him <laughs> when I read it. Cause I'm like, oh great. What silly thing is it? Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit. Um, have you seen um, any his more recent stuff? Not really. I like Tusk was the last one. Oh, I, I love Tusk. I, I enjoyed Tusk a lot, and I. But I've never saw Red State. I you should see Red State. I would like to honestly. I listened to your 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 buddies over there, Shields with Podcast episodes you were on, um, and very much enjoy your guys' show. Um, but it was one of those things that I was just like, oh, and it was just it made me think about different. You know. I would like to say that, personally, Mallrats, one of my favorites. Yeah. I was going to say, did not do farewell on your list. No, uh, because I when, when, you, when you mix it up with everything else, it's yeah. the... But I love Mall. There's no Kevin Smith movie I hate. Yeah. Cop Out's very close. Yeah, that's <laughs> But I still enjoy I remember, it. <laughs> I don't think I ever finished it. it oh, it's, one, it's bad. I think it was one I put on, I fell asleep while watching, and then I, like, I feel okay with not worrying about following that And one you up. can see him in it. Mm-hmm. It's particularly with Sean William Scott because Sean William Scott seems to get Kevin Smith, mm-hmm. but Bruce Willis, you could just tell, did not want to fucking be there, and it it really took away from the movie. Well, the thing was, I remember hearing about that he made that movie for like his dad because it was like it was the kind of movie his dad loved. Yeah, which I think the idea is great, but it just obviously the execution didn't. 
shake right. it quite as well. Exactly. So yeah, I have Clerks 3. Um, so now in this round, normally I would do it in the second round, but we are going to play Right Quote Wrong Movie head-to-head because you haven't got a chance to do that yet. You've no. only done it live. I did the, uh, yeah. And, uh, and just so everybody knows, this has not been... Um, <laughs> three outs for four. I might have doubled up there. Who gives a crap? <laughs> it's my game, damn it. I can have an extra card if I want. Um, right. And so, um, yeah, so this went over real well playing live. In fact, those of you listening somehow to this before I've released it will find that the live recording of Right Quote Wrong Movie just dropped today. Woohoo! <laughs> um, but with that, I'm going to start this. Let's get this beer going first. And, oh, that's, that Mr. Giggles is awesome. All awesome, right. awesome. So what do we got here? So, uh, the next one we got is Growlix. Uh, I again. love the can, by the way. So, by the way, I don't know if you know this, and I did not know this. The terminology for, like, you know, the blacked out swear words is Growlix, which is... Okay, so... So that's, <laughs> again, kind of a fun thing. Um, the other thing that's actually super cool is most of the can uh, designs are actually done by uh, Craig's sister. That's uh, cool. She's apparently a designer, and... Um, Literally, I guess, came up, uh, does a lot of the uh, design work, which I well, think is fun, because this one is, you know, set up to look very kind of comic book art-ish. Well, and what, what I really like about all their cans that I've seen so far is that it, it's kind of like with Bentwater's thing, there's immediately things that are only foul-mouthed in the cans, mm-hmm. but you can't just look at it on its own and immediately go, that's a foul-mouthed beer. Yeah. So absolutely. it has kind of like, it draws you in. It's kind of like, ooh, who makes that? Well, again, I think they do a good job, like, their stuff is just now kind of hitting the shelves, but I like that... I think most of the artwork on their cans and stuff is it's catchy that it would be like oh okay. extremely catchy. So, um, but yeah, uh, this is so this is a six point four, a little down from our. Let's last try one. it. So Growlix. So it's so freaking clean. Yeah, all their stuff. Wow, I can see why you like it so much. Yeah. So yeah, that's this awesome. was my summertime beer. I was gonna say they. This was the first. Uh, they did this in a sour. I can't remember which sour it was, uh, were their first two beers that they canned this uh, back in June, and this literally became my summertime beer that I literally picked up multiple four-packs of. Oh, of course. you got I was going camping and stuff. Like, You know what's kind of become, uh, even though it comes, oh, well, it's all year now, Sam 76 became a really good summer that's beer. That's not a bad because, beer at all. Because it has some heft to it, mm-hmm. and, and I love Porch Rocker, and I love, you know, then you get in, this show is getting me back into doing the weird stuff, you know yeah. what I mean? But Sam 76 became a, I know everyone's going to like this. But it's mm-hmm. not common. Mm-hmm. It has a very it, it's like it's a lager, but they kind of went. You know what? We want this to kind of be a little bit unique. Well, and I, think I, it's and a, I again, really like that. Honestly, I got kind of sick of just the regular Boston lager. Yeah, of course. And so I think it's a. It is definitely a. Little it's a. It's flavor. a lighter but more bodied version of Boston lager. Absolutely. So anyway, our first film, sir, right. is Jaws. Not rigged at all. I swear. Even though it's my favorite. <laughs> it's. I mean, I just pulled right out of the box, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Oh, all of these are really good, and I don't know if any of them are good for Jaws. I'm going to start. I'll do great, kid. Don't get cocky. Star Wars. Jaws. I could just see Hooper saying that over and over and over again. Oh, Hooper Quint, sorry. I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a little something you can't take off in Glorious Bastards. First round, Dan. <laughs> All right. Next. Marathon Man. Oh, goodness. Now, I don't know if I know Marathon Man. Remind you know, me real quick. I, I, dude, to tell you the truth, I haven't seen it in so long that we're going to curb it until we know what it is, because that won't be fun for anyone. Gotcha. <laughs> um, another one that it's, you know, you get these weird ones that are in there that... Lord of the Rings. Okay. See? Law balls, ladies and gentlemen. That's what that's what our beer drinking show is about. <laughs> oh, this this is already going so much better because I can actually finish the beer in the time limit. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep it near that two ounce mark. All right. <laughs> so even though the movie this is from is not good. Horse says, you are a spirit walker, a man who has been to the other side and returned, a man who cannot be killed in battle. Lord of the Rings. From the Lone Ranger. 
may you for, uh, may you ride forever shiny and chrome. Dan again, Both. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this game is incredible. Well, as soon as I, you I, said Lord of the Rings, I'm like, oh, I got a shiny. I need this game. <laughs> oh, here we are, session nine. Have you ever seen session nine, sir? Uh, yeah, a horror movie in the asylum. Local, Denver right? State. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I actually got the perfect one for that. I'm going to... Go for first. it. What an excellent day for an exorcism. Yeah, it's perfect. So, um... <laughs> I don't have anything that good, so I'll go, I've seen enough horror movies to know that any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. But you, Dan, with the cleanup, ladies and gentlemen. And look at this. Look at how one episode in, how much better I am at timing here. Yeah. 14 seconds to go in the round. Excellent, sir. So, um... Oh, this is so much fun. Oh, are you having a good time out there? I can't they're, for they're, that, they're I, not. They're not answering me, Dan. It's so weird how that doesn't work in real time. <laughs> they never answer me. My mom says I'm cool. <laughs> um. So while I'm doing this, tell us about our next beer, sir, and I'm gonna let you pick the topic for this round, Super Geek. Ooh. Okay. Um. So, uh, horse of a different color. I like it. Uh, I can't exactly remember what the situation on this particular one was, but I think it had something to do with something about the wrong malt or something I think was originally used for this, which caused the beer to be a different color than it was originally intended. But ultimately it ended up becoming a much better beer than what they originally went for. So they're calling it's called an American Red, and it's 5%. Oh, okay. But I think the idea was something to do with that's not what they were originally brewing, and I think it had something to do with that there was an error that was made by one of their brewers, and it caused this. But I like that they just went went with it anyway. Yeah, well, when you brew that much beer, you're just a matter of like, well, we're not going to waste it. So. All right, let's try this bastard. Ooh. Yeah, I really like this one as well. Oh, hell yeah with the malt. Yeah. Malt heavy. Finally, a malt heavy <laughs> beer in the U.S. <laughs> that's not a stout. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rarity, sir. <laughs> Oh, that's delicious. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, let's let's talk about something. What's uh, what's fresh on your mind, Sister Sledge? <laughs> well, actually, I will talk about something that happened last night for me. So, um, your balls dropped? Oh, that must be it. No, um, not yet. Someday. Uh, How, so whose kids are they then? No, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can edit that later. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Anyway, so um, about five years ago, you know my good buddy um, John, yeah, uh, Blind John or Margie, as depending on Margie. So um, he uh, asked me. He goes, "Hey, my dad has an old laser disc player. Would you want it?" Like five years ago. Yes, like, absolutely. Like to have a laser disc player would be awesome. So he brings me. He's like, "All right, cool. I'll see my dad. He's got like a handful of laser discs. I'll bring them for you." So he brings them. They are not. In fact, a laser disc player. Have you ever heard of a video disc player? No, I have not. Most people haven't. It came out almost. It came out before Betamax, uh, but it's actually movies that are I'm actually so confused. on vinyl. I'm in love. So it's a very. It's a hipster's dream. Well, <laughs> absolutely. Again, I I get made fun of for being a hipster all the time because again, I. Love it's all good. It. Keep talking. No I'm problem. not. I just want to make sure that this is actually recording. Since no problem. Hurt camera I've ever worked with. We're recording, so keep going. So, um, Video disc player. Video disc player. And again, so they're, um, they come in these hard plastic like cases, and they're flat like in the size of a record. They're called CEDs. That's the, kind of the, the abbreviation for like the movies. Themselves. Cash every day. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I had a uh, gut in like, so he gave me just a handful of the movies. I've only watched a couple of them. Um, it was cool. Well, I have been crazy getting wrapped up into following um, VHS collectors online yep. now. And it makes me sad that I got rid of all my VHS because I had a ridiculous collection at one point from, again, my movie gallery days. But um, the Bull Moose, do you guys have, you have Bull Moose down here? Um, there's no Bull Moose in Massachusetts, I don't think. But we go to Bull Moose. Okay. I, so, I know all about Bull Moose. So Bull Moose is a really cool video um, music store. They sell books now. They do really a lot of cool stuff. But... Their Brunswick location, which is actually the original location in Maine, uh, somebody posted they just were someone just brought in over two hundred CEDs, and <laughs> so last night on our way home, I so Dan went to his retirement account. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually more uh, kind of bummed out because the people I follow are like diehard like horror collectors. They got there first and literally got 
all the most amazing horror movies. They got themselves uh, Friday the 13th Part 1, Part 2, the original Phantasm, uh, I think Amityville, like all these great original, and it's just like, how much fun would it be to watch those? Because watching VHS itself is kind of fun because, you know, as much as a hell, I love a nice 4K, you know, amazing picture. There's something about Friday the 13th and Phantasm on VHS with the you, popping and oh, the you tracking. You've got to have that little bit on there. So, uh, but anyway, I went and ended up getting myself three movies. I got Enter the Dragon. That That's cool. Which, again, I was like, okay, that's great. I got the Westworld. And I love the original Westworld. Oh. And then I got, uh, and I picked it up mostly before the cover. I got Clint Eastwood's The Gauntlet. Now I don't have you. Seen I've it? never seen The Gauntlet. I know about it. I've never okay. seen it. So you know, it's a pretty interesting movie. The idea is, a person's headed to testify. They're riding a bus, and it's in the mob's best interest that this person doesn't Not make go it. testify. So literally, all these people are out there to literally gun down this witness, and Clint Eastwood is trying to protect them, trying to get there. Now, do you know who Frank Frazetta is? Yes, I do. He did the artwork that's on the front of the CED. And it's... Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to have to pop this up during the show. Reminder okay. to myself. So it literally, it's artwork of Jeez, Clint Eastwood Frank looking Frazetta. super badass with this bus flipped on its side. And it's just like, I was just like, if nothing else, I want it for that because I have all the Molly Hatchet albums yep. because I want the Frank Frazetta art. So, so good. But that's it, awesome. So yeah, no, it was just one of those things. I was just like, I went through the movies and I didn't buy it. And I kicked myself cause it was actually still an original sealed copy of it. They had view to a kill as well. Oh, that would have been pretty kick-ass, but it was just one of those things. I didn't want to go nuts at $5 a pop. And I was like, I don't know the quality of these things. Again, these are super old media. And who knows like how, how beat up they can get. Have you tried any of them yet? I have not. I literally just got it last night and I haven't rehooked up my video disc player at my new house. So it's one of those things. But that's literally my plan this week. Is to oh, dude. I can't wait to watch these things. So. Oh, that's so cool. You know what then? For for the next time that we do, or not the next time, because but for any time. It would be really cool to sit down and watch through a couple of those oh, because I'd love the experience because I've I've never even watched a laser disc. Yeah, no, again, I've never watched a real laser disc. We watched they had a couple Rips laser of discs them. in school. Yeah, and it was one of those things that like oh here and it was everybody's like, AV club still had laser discs. So, all right, so we on to the next one. We sir? are, and I'm and, and I I may have a, since it's Halloween time, I'll have a topic. So Sweet. tell us about this sucker. All right, so the next one we've got is egregious cosmonaut. It I is, love the name. So it is a Russian Imperial um, Stout. Uh, we're at ten and a half percent. Now the fun the Russian Imperial Stouts always end up dead center, and they ruin the rest of the. No, they're so good; they just ruin my ability to focus for the rest Absolutely. of the show. Um, so uh, this particular beer, uh, they released uh, eight hundred of these bottles, and I hand numbered the labels, though you can't see them because of the condensation is kind of apparently worn that off uh but i actually hand numbered 300 of these for and which uh, number was yours do you remember i did uh one through 100 i did four to 500 and 700 to 800 but this one do you remember what number it was i think we were in the 700s i think this was among my last of the ones i had done so all right so cheers to you so oh my god that smells good and so this one has actually been aging in my beer cellar since uh, i believe january and is that not amazingly solid? How long have they been around? Three years, man. This is this is master class right here. No, they, again, it's one of those things I wish... Uh, this is a hard type of beer to make. <laughs> they, do, they do an extremely <laughs> solid job with it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this may have been one of the brewer's Bill's homebrew recipes that he actually brought he, to the you, brewery. You can tell because... Sometimes breweries try to do this too early, and they end up to, and this is not a problem. They end up with a Russian Imperial style that tastes too much like a porter, tastes too much like a boozy porter. And I love porters, mm. but just call it a bourbon barrel porter. Then you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? It just they're they're too um too thin. Mm -hmm. This is this is a beast. This is great. No, they do an awesome job with this one. And again, the fact that this also is aged, so it also helps mellow any of the booziness that may have possibly been there at the beginning. I don't actually remember them being a lot of booziness with this particular one to begin with. No, but it's there now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the aging that did it. Mm. So, you, sir, are a 
trashy, awesome horror movie fan just like me. Ooh, we that established that. Statement. I'm catching up because it's October time and I got a Shutter subscription. I've actually been meaning to talk to you about that because, again, I want to know if it's a worthwhile investment. Cause Every kinda... penny. Okay, I feel like I kind of... Shudder is incredible, dude. All right. So I've been catching up on some stuff. So I'll, I'll talk about a couple of recent things that you may be interested in. You may have seen them. Have you ever seen... This is an older movie, like older as in early 2000s. Have you ever seen Behind the Mask? The Rise of Leslie Vernon? No. Oh, dude. I, I've never seen it. Okay. So Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon exists in a world... Where it, it's a found footage movie, but it breaks found footage movie rules, but okay. it does it in the best way. It does okay. it like intentionally. So the idea is it exists in a world where Freddy Krueger, Jason, Chucky, all of these possessed supernatural killings are all legit. They're all okay. known that they happened. They've been suppressed by the police or whatever. And this lady is going to a small town in the Midwest to interview a guy who claims to be the next one. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he tells her. Hey, there was this kid who was um, thought to be evil. The townspeople came and murdered his parents and threw him over the uh, waterfall. I am that person reincarnated and I am about to go on my killing spree. I'll take you behind the scenes and show you my shit. So they kind of are like half believing him because it's like a puff piece like local journalism thing until they get in the middle of the deep shit and realize that the movie leaves it ambiguous until the end and I won't blow it till you see it over whether like, you know, there's like... um. For instance, uh, Robert Englund is the guy's, um, Freddy Krueger, is the guy's, like, William Loomis, who's chasing him and saying, no, you don't know who you're dealing with. This man (laughs) is a mental patient. He has escaped, and I'm trying to hunt him down. (laughs) So he may not be who he's saying he is, and is that more or less dangerous? That's, like, one of the things. So when she gets into this this thing, they literally get to the point in a found footage movie where the... Because he goes and shows them, I saw the axes, so when people try to use them, the heads snap. I have... You know, I cut all the tree branches, so when they try to climb out the window, they break and they fall and kill them. He's got the whole thing figured out. I do cardio. I use sleep depri- uh, sensory deprivation chambers so I can look like I'm dead. And I'm like, this is a... It, it's like Scream, but on like yeah. an even more meta level. It's yeah. wonderful. Until she realizes, when she finds out that his virgin final girl that he's been telling her he's been following is not who he says she realized that she's the final girl and then that's the point where she tells the film crew put the damn cameras down they put the cameras down and then an actual hollywood movie starts for the last 20 minutes and films and i'm like so they get rid of the why would people still be filming now she's like put the cameras down we need to fucking kick this guy's ass (laughs) and it's awesome now is kane hodder in that kane hodder is not in it that's hatchet Okay. For some reason, I was thinking uh, I just watched the Kane Hodder story, and I was somehow thinking that he was somehow involved in that particular one. But maybe I'm thinking of... no Hatchet Kane Hodder. He maybe he might have been like on the production team, but okay. he's not in it. Gotcha. Maybe I'm just thinking. Okay. I don't remember what I'm thinking of, but no worries. I Probably won't say Hatchet. It regardless. And like, then there's Victor Crowley, which was maybe, the fourth Hatchet movie. Maybe that's what I was thinking of yeah. Victor Crowley. Victor Crowley's awesome. I, I actually am not a huge fan of the Hatchet series, even though I love what they mean. Mm-hmm. And I love the Kane Hodders there. They're just, they're not quite, they're, I, I don't know. It just, I love slasher movies and something's missing for me, even though I think the guy that makes them is great. Mm-hmm. He made Frozen. Have you ever seen Frozen? Only the Disney version. Let's talk about Frozen in the next round. All right. <laughs> this is we'll do some horror movie, and then um, actually we'll talk about Frozen in the round after. I want you to throw out a horror movie for this round. All right. Uh, we're gonna introduce the beer on this one. We are, sir. That's, all right. This well, is going great. All right. Do you want me to keep going with this? Because yeah. This one. Oh no. Is, is this, this one, one of mine? That's one of yours. I'll oh, cool. You. Then I will introduce this. So this was actually brought by the guest on episode one, Pat Perry. Okay. Um, and he he went overboard like I did and bought like thirteen beers and brought them, <laughs> and we did five from each of ours. This is Heretic, Release Your Inner Heretic, Chocolate Hazelnut Porter, a rich smooth ale poured with natural flavors. This is 7% alcohol by volume. I have not tried this, so I don't know how it is. The label is really cool. It's kind of got like a stone thing going on. Yeah. With like that little devil head there and everything. I like the, uh, definitely the gothic yeah. writing on it. It smells so, awesome. Last time we had the Stoutello, which was a Nutella mm-hmm. themed stout, so I have a feeling this is going to be similar. Oh no, this is better. That's really, really. Solid. Oh, that's delicious. It, it, you know, sometimes when they do the hazelnut flavoring, mm-hmm. it comes off too much like a syrup. That no. did not do that here. No, I, I said it's really good. Uh, the only other hazelnut beer I've ever had is. Um, do you know the kind of the restaurant chain um, Sea Dog Brewing? Yeah, they have a hazelnut porter. 
Oh, that must do. be great. And that one's actually. Very I love solid. Sea Dog, and it's they they branched out for a bit, and then the one around here went away, and it's a bummer because I I think Sea Dog's great. Yeah, I was gonna say my wife is a very big fan of their Sunfish, which yeah, is, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's a damn beer. good beer. <laughs> right, so so throw something that I may not have seen, um, sir. I can't believe I stumped you on that one. That makes yeah. me feel good. Um, so. I'm not. I feel like I'm not going to stump you on anything. Stumping it's just more to talk. Like. Okay, so I posted on Twitter, and I'm actually kind of embarrassed for myself. I had never seen Halloween three. Neither have I. You've never seen. Okay, so I know all about it, and okay. and I'll and I'll, inter- I'll um, say it here. I've never. I know exactly what it is, and I know that I will love it, but I've never seen it. So, like growing up, it was one of those things. Like everyone's like. Don't watch it. It doesn't have Michael Myers. It's not worth it. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, then I just literally skipped over it. You know, I watched all the other terrible Halloween movies. Um, But I've been listening to a lot of different horror podcasts, and everyone's just like, Halloween 3 is Is the real deal. And I was just like, oh, okay. And so I, it's, uh, by the way, on HBO Go right now, if you have access to it. Oh, can't wait. Then I'm watching it. Yeah. Um, I've been thinking about just buying it. You know what I mean? It's one of those those things I just was like, all right, let's just see what's available. And I was actually looking for the original Halloween 1978, and I saw that um, it makes no sense. uh, HBO Go right now, Halloween from last year that came out, Halloween 2. And Halloween 3. Oh, they got to get the first one, because what makes the newest Halloween so good, because I loved it, mm-hmm. is watching it back-to-back with the first movie. Well, that's what I would like to do, and I just... I haven't have you seen, seen the new one? I have not seen the new one yet. Uh, but I just actually found out that my... Real did. deal. All right. The real deal. Sweet. Well, I will have to go check it, but I will say, honestly, Halloween 3, please get over the fact that it's not Michael Myers, and it is an amazing horror movie. Great. It's just, they do a really, really good job. I'm a huge John Carpenter fan anyway, (laughs) and just to hear, like, you know, just when his score comes up for movies, it's just like, it's great. It's it's one of those things I absolutely love. And and what a ballsy thing to do for a third movie to just kind of go, you know what, they never wanted to make the second one, Mm -hmm. but he kind of got forced for the studio and says, okay, I've ended this now, like, you got your movie, let me do something different. Like, he wanted it to be an anthology thing, like the Cloverfield movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the idea was that you could come up with a Halloween movie, like, every year or every other year, and they would just do its own separate story, and, you know, it'd be great. So, I would assume you've seen Trick or Treat, right? <laughs> seen? Yeah. Oh, Worship? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but that's, a, that's one I have not watched yet this season, but that's on my list of ones to watch. Actually, you know what I just watched the other night? Is I watched Three from Hell, which I had not seen yet. Have you been to the theater to see that yet? It's out? Well, there was a there was a, a release, and I was I've seen it. Let's oh, just say bummer! That. Oh, I really um, wanted you. I watched Thirty One, and as I am with any Rob Zombie film, even the ones I don't like, I really give that guy a lot of credit for his he he goes all in. His visual style is oh, yeah. top notch. He doesn't have to work on his visuals at all. Mm-hmm. He needs a writing partner. Um, is my that. is my because he just needs someone to help rein him in. Because have you seen Thirty One? I've seen part of 31. It's not very good. And it's kind of a bummer because I love, like, individual bits of 31 are great. (laughs) You know what I mean? I've been told that (laughs) scenes of 31, there are some great scenes. And the actors in it are giving it their all. It's just, it's it's exactly what his fans paid for. And it's exactly, like, the lowest common denominator of, if you had someone say, what movies does Rob Zombie make and they've never seen them, this is the movie they tell you he makes. And this is not, like, you take this and put it side by side with Lords of Salem, there are two polar opposites thematically, yeah. <laughs> you know? I'll be honest, I need to give um, Lords of Salem. Took two views. Okay. Hated it the first time I watched it. Yeah. Took two views. I now believe it's his best film. I think I need to, I really want to go back and rewatch it. I don't think I was ready for the slow burn that it is. It's so fucked up. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that, again, I've watched it once. I was kind of half paying attention when I watched it. I'd like to go back and rewatch it and give it a... A Excuse full me. Share, uh, full shake on that one, but so since we're still on Halloween, while well, we have a little bit left in this round, the new Halloween. Mm-hmm. Do you, you know who made it? Right, I don't remember. It was directed by David Gordon Green. David Gordon Green is the creator of Eastbound and Down. Oh, okay. And the director of a um, bunch of Seth Rogen movies. Okay. And and Isn't he also he choice? also made Stronger. So he's the 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 Boston Marathon movie. Yeah. With, so he's he's got dramatic chops. Okay. But to hear him like I want to do a Halloween movie. And who wrote your Halloween movie? Oh, the the star of Eastbound and Down. 
what's his name? Danny McBride. Danny, Danny McBride wrote this Halloween movie. And I'm like, all right, so somebody, Carpenter must have seen something in them because Carpenter scored it with his son. Oh. He executive produced it. You know what I mean? They got the original Michael Myers back to play yeah. Michael Myers. They got the original Jamie, Jamie Lee. It's, it is not a perfect film, mm-hmm. but it has that rough and tumble independent film thing that made the original Halloween so good. So stuff that doesn't work, you go, man, they were going for something cool there. <laughs> and the stuff that does work, they made Michael Myers fucking scary again. Okay. And that's really important. Oh, yeah. He is terrifying in this movie. Nice. Yeah. They made him the boogeyman again. That was okay. that was the whole that was the whole idea. He's he's terrifying and unstoppable. Like you know, in the other movies, he's kind of like a shadow that just pops up. Yeah. This movie has a continuous tracking shot that's probably five or six minutes long of him just showing up in Haddonfield for the first time and walking down the street, walking by trick or treaters, and veering into someone's house, getting a knife, horribly killing that person, pulling out, following him, and just o- over and over. And it's like it. Instead of that being gratuitous, you're yeah. like, oh my god, I'm even more terrified of... It's kind of like in Rogue One. Yeah. When you see Darth Vader actually be Darth Vader for the first fucking time, and you yeah. go, oh shit, that's yeah. exactly what they did here. You're like, Michael Myers is scarier than he's ever been. He's also... They made him... Um, you know how in the first movie he like would set up little like vignettes with like the tombstone and yeah. like or th- they play with the fact that like he's sadistic. He, he knocks a guy's teeth out. And bashing his head against the wall, and there's a girl hiding in a stall, and he reaches over and drops the teeth down, to kind of like, "Hey, you're next." <laughs> and I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, it's just so brutal. Like, it's wow. just nasty. It's not fun. Uh-huh. It's nasty. <laughs> and, right. uh, and I loved it. And Jamie Lee Curtis is, you know, through the, he had joked that before they had announced they were making a sequel to it, uh-huh. that if they ever got him, gave him a sequel, he'd just remake Halloween three and piss everybody off. <laughs> <laughs> But um, instead, they're doing Halloween. Uh, it's called Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. Oh, nice. And I guess they're him and Carpenter are just finally killing it. Like we're gonna finish it off. Because I thought they did that with this one, but it's a Halloween movie. So, yeah. I mean, just like with Halloween H two O, it kind of ends in a. There's no way he got out of this. And then they made that terrible Halloween movie. Where they're like, oh, it wasn't him. It was a guy whose throat he crushed, and then she chopped his head off. And they're like, no, this is not. No, damn it. Yeah. You ever uh, see that terrible one? Halloween Resurrection. It's so like Halloween H two O is stupid, but I love it. I Halloween Resurrection it because, is horrible. I remember watching H two O because I was just like, dude, it, it's got Jamie Lee Curtis again. You know, it's going to be great. And then, <laughs> yeah, and and I like H two O, but it's H two O is what if Halloween was a bad '90s slasher movie, and that that's literally what yeah, they that, did. That's pretty accurate. And, and, and they they just kind of injected it into that. But Halloween Resurrection is just is just. Offensive. I actually have not watched how you should, dude. It's got um, which rapper was in it? Buster Rhymes. Yeah, it's and he's not the problem with the movie, <laughs> but still, <laughs> I, was gonna say, I think doesn't H2O have LL Cool J if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, and he's and he's the sacrificial black man in that. Mm. Yeah, mm. <laughs> kind of a bum. He was good in it, it wasn't but... terrible, but yeah, I was gonna say, I just liked uh, H2O that had um, her, um, whatchamacallit. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's mom show up. Yes, that for the cameo on that. Which anytime you get her in your horror movie, you're um you're doing something right. Well, speaking of horror, I think your uh, next one is very yeah. Halloween themed. So, The Haunted House by Allagash, a personal favorite brand of the two of ours, I would imagine. Yes, absolutely. Hey, it's a beer from Maine. Ooh, yeah. did you smell it? Mm. And I'm actually rocking my Allagash belt buckle today too. Oh, nice. Oh wow. Wow. So it's exactly what they say it is. It's a hoppy dark ale. Yeah, no, I like this a lot. It's almost like they took the black and hopped it. Mm, I love the black. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. All right, so Frozen. Okay. No one has seen Frozen. So Adam, okay, as, as as you've said this, I've been thinking about this. Is this the one with the, the ski uh, lift? Okay. Have yeah. you seen it? No, I, I can see I can see the cover or at least the image on so, Netflix or whatever to watch it. So Adam Green is one of those guys like Rob Zombie that just gets horror. Okay. I haven't loved every movie Adam Green has made, but he gets horror. Frozen is his magnum opus, and no one has seen it. Um, Adam Green is the creator of the Jack Chop commercial. You've seen that, right? Oh, my God. That was from his film festival. That's Adam Green directed I did not that. know that was yeah. him. Okay. Adam Green is the creator of the we, Jack Chop. We literally used, when I worked at, um, in Dispatch at AAA, we used to literally make fun of the f- Jack Chop all the we're time. We're going to blow your blues away because we're going to be jacking your fucking pumpkins all day. <laughs> <Fucking> <laughs> Jack <idea>. Chop. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Special discount for people from Lynn. That's how it ends. <laughs> You'll get the jack job and the fucking glow stick free. <laughs> anyway, so Frozen. It's literally like a script that could be done on a stage. 
because it's just three people on a ski lift. Mm -hmm. They they literally filmed it with the three people on the ski lift. Like they actually had them up on a ski lift and put a camera rig. So the actors were being put through the fucking motions. It is absolutely one of the most tense movies I've ever seen. So what happens is they go to like a Berkshire's like middle of nowhere, like Massachusetts ski um, resort. Mm -hmm. But they go when it's only open on the weekends. So they pay the guy off to let them on the lift, and then he gets pulled away by an emergency, and he tells the other guy, yeah, no, we're all set. They turn it off with them halfway up, so they're stuck there for a week. Mm. So it's just them freezing to death, basically, yeah. and wolves circling below. And it is just the most intense goddamn thing. Whereas Hatchet is tongue-in-cheek, this movie is not tongue-in-cheek. This movie is survival horror uh, at the most ridiculous degree. It's brutal. Almost nothing happens. But when it does happen, it's got, you know, like the people trying to make their way down the, like, and, and that actually being awful for your hands. And it's just not, it's, it's just so intense. Just one of those just makes you uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. And he, he and I didn't, and I didn't think he had it in him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it just ruled. And then the, when they, when one of them finally attempts to escape, it just goes to complete zero to 11 shit that's incredible it's a great right. movie it's very similar to the descent oh, okay. that level of like tension building where it's like that's it's, one i have not i think i watched it when it first came out i don't think i've seen it loved, since. and never watched the second one yeah no it's not good let's be honest how many horror sequels I, I, okay i as mm. those words leave my lips that is an inaccurate statement because there's plenty of good sequels but i would say and like we talked about rob zombie earlier I much rather watch Devil's Rejects and Three from Hell than watch oh, so, Thousand Courts. So what we have? What we have a minute left? Will I like Three from Hell? I think so. I don't think it's a horror movie though. Neither was the Devil's Rejects. Yeah, I think that it's right on that same line again. Where you follow that, I think they did a really good job. I don't know if you know this about me. I love luchadors. Yes, you do. There is luchadors in that. Okay, I'm, I'm on. I'm on board. I, and that literally and, alone made me like. Uh, and you know what? Yeah. Since we're talking horror. Cheers to Sid Haig, rest in peace. Oh, absolutely. I got to meet him on more than one occasion. An amazingly nice dude. Oh, such a bummer. Mm -hmm. Such a bummer. I mean, he wasn't young, but mm -hmm. so, but such a bummer. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, by the way, I do, I, again, I saw your, you had done a piece about uh, Spider Baby. Baby. I have never seen that. You've got to watch it. I have it. It's one of these things, uh, <laughs> I was actually looking through my, <laughs> I, you know, you know how you guys had that fancy little deal at Blockbuster where you could rent as many movies as you want whenever i had a day off i used to rent and burn dvds of course all the time and spider baby was something they randomly had in the store and i was like yep and so, i burned it but i've never watched so it it's just be, sitting in my being a fan of cult stuff mm -hmm. spider baby it's it's like it's almost watching it now and not having like have seen it when i was younger mm -hmm. it feels like someone is trying to make a cult movie not like that they're just in the cult. It feels like someone is going out of their way to like make sure it has the stuff. The, but it's not. It's made by like the king of cult movies, and it's one of his first. Yeah. Jack Hill. You know what I mean? Like yeah. exposi um, sorry, uh, exploitation in cult oh, films. Yeah. And what I loved about it is it existed in that time period where as long as you didn't show something on screen, you could imply pretty much anything you wanted. Oh, yeah. And the shit they imply that's going on in this movie is fucking vile. Right. And they never say it. They just imply it by like the way the characters are, and mm -hmm. you're just like, wait a minute, are you saying? Oh God, you are saying that. Oh no. <laughs> and also, it's it's hero is a scumbag, and you never <laughs> saw that in movies then. Yeah, you usually because he's the clean cut, you know, like Ron Howard looking guy. But the majority of the movie is him trying to get in this other woman's pants. The only reason <laughs> they survive is because he removes her from the situation to try to get laid. It doesn't work out, but they both get shit faced. And the reason that the House of Horror stuff continues is they split up because he goes, "Yeah, you'll be fine," and he's obviously hammered and just <laughs> lets her get into trouble. Then he gets tied up by the Spider Baby, which is his niece. Mm -hmm. And she starts coming on to him, and he kind of goes along with it. It's fucking gross. <laughs> like you're sitting there going, "What is happening by the here?" Way, isn't the theme song to that done by Lon Chaney? Yes, it is, and Lon Chaney Jr. is in it. Oh, okay, he's the butler. All right, yeah, no, I definitely want to watch that here. I'll have to add it to my October it's list here. It's bonkers, and you should get in on that. It's, um, Synapse Two Cent Cinema. Mm -hmm. It's a movie book club. 
Okay. Where they assign a movie a week, and you, if you want to, you can watch it and write 200 words and send it in, and they publish it. Well, my writing is terrible, so... And so is mine, but, but that's but that's it was a challenge for me. And I was right. like, Excellent. they just did Horror Noir. I want to watch it. It's so good. I, I won't tell you a damn thing about it. We'll I watched the it. trailers and stuff like that like a while ago that it was coming out, and I was just like, that's a really cool idea. It reminded me that there's a Tales from the Hood too. Did you know that? I did not know that. It's actually. good. All it's right. not as good as Tales from the Hood, but few things are. Yeah. But it's the same director, the director of um, Rusty Cundiff, the director of Fear of a Black Hat. Okay. Who I did not know was the guy who made Tales from the Hood, so I, I went and re-looked at it. Wow, I don't think I realized that either, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're, we're moving on, and you feel free to be a topic for the Party Jam Plum, or I can come up with something, uh, whatever I'll you want. you come up with something, and I'll follow your lead. Okay, so back into the vein of stuff on Shudder that I don't know if you know existed. Are you a fan of Creepshow? Uh, yes. It's been a while since I've seen Creepshow, Did... but I remember literally being really excited that our local library, when I was growing up, had the comic book accompaniment of the uh, of Creepshow. All right, that's a good sour. I will give you that. That is actually... Wow. Like, that is my level of sour, because if you get... Sometimes it's too fruity and too juicy. Yeah. No. Another good sour for the Party Jam Plum. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, th- so, oh, that's really fucking good. Um, so what was I going to say? Uh, I did not know this when I got my, I got my Shutter subscription so I could watch Horror Noir yeah. for, for the Two Cent Cinema because, like, I have to see this movie and watch mm-hmm. the trailer. Creepshow. Greg Nicotero from KNB, our favorite um, gore effects company. Okay. He's the executive producer of The Walking Dead. He's been involved in every Sam Raimi movie, every Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah. He directed one of, or was co-directed one of the Night of the Living Dead remakes with Tom Savini. This guy's the real deal. He decided Creepshow needs a TV show. Okay. And he directs almost all of it. And he does all the gore effects. It is a return to almost everything's a practical effect. And I'm talking Ooh. big, like, rubber suit, like, crazy monster stuff. Uh-huh. It's it's insane. Um, not every single one hits, but it, there's three episodes now. And it's oh. it's Creepshow, Tales from the Crypt style, like, vignette stories. Nice. Amazing. My friend Tim, Tim Loves, yeah. you, you turned me on to it. I, the third episode just came out. My favorite one that they've done, just mm-hmm. to give you kind of a, one, they use all the comic book imagery of the original yeah. creep show. So when like someone sees something horrifying, they, they do like the Dutch zoom on the head and like yeah. the lines come out on the side with like yeah. the pink and weird surreal background. They do the whole thing. But my favorite one is this really subtle one. It's called the house of the head, which I think is a really funny play on words. Yeah. It's a little girl who gets a dollhouse uh-huh. and she's really into playing with this dollhouse. And she comes in one night and sees that the dolls are all barricaded in a room and kind of like in a bed all together like staring, <laughs> and looks in the other room and there's this severed zombie head just sitting there on the table. And when she wakes up in the morning, they're somewhere else like looking around. Oh, they must be looking for the head. She realizes that her little doll family is scared. So she asks the parents, can I go to the doll store? I want to get more stuff for my dollhouse. They go, yeah, sure, honey. She buys a police officer. <laughs> The police officer the next morning when she wakes up, his head has been removed. So she she goes and tries to find a priest. So we don't have a priest, but we have a Native American shaman. The Native American shaman's hand is removed and so is his head. And it goes on and on and on from there. It's amazing. And this nice. is the kind of shit that they're, they're doing here. It's it's that perfect bridge between, this is probably too violent to show my kid, but Creepshow had that same yeah. thing. Like You could see that at like eight or nine years old and it wouldn't scar you for life, but it, but it's horrifying. Yes. And that's my favorite type, and that's totally what they're going for. you, you got to see Creepshow. But, but let's be honest, those friggin' roaches, man. Oh, yeah, let's we'll forget it, but let's not talk about the roaches. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because my kid's eight, and I was just like... Let's not talk about the roaches. I was supposed to be like, can I show my kid that? And I was like, no, no, I can't. No, you can't show your kid that part of Creepshow. <laughs> So Twilight Zone, the movie, then, you can probably show your kids. Uh, I would actually... <laughs> even, even though real people died during the making of that, and that's kind of shitty. But <laughs> uh, Yeah. I don't think I... When I I'll i be honest. I had nightmares for the original one, and it's the friggin' uh, the terror at 10,000 feet. The So we have a minute and 20 seconds left. Have you seen... I, I know this is breaking my rule, but it's. have you seen the new Twilight Zone show? I have not. I have not heard good things. So I would like to rebuke the not hearing good things. I, again, I, I trust think, you, sir. So I think the world is too... Um, my first takeaway with the new Twilight Zone show is it is not perfect. But that's what I like about the Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. It perfectly catches what the original Twilight Zone was. I think people wanted Tales from the Crypt or Creep show. 
And instead got, it's very tongue in cheek. It's very winky and it's very simple okay. in its, in it, in its thing. I think people wanted too much out of it, especially with um, Jordan Peele attached to it. Yeah. He is he is definitely doing a perfect homage to the original Twilight Zone. The thing that I realized after I had never seen Black Mirror, mm-hmm. I watched Black Mirror after watching the Twilight Zone. After going through all of Black Mirror, I go, I see why people don't like Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone did a couple of things that were similar to Black Mirror uh-huh. and weren't as edgy with it. Because I love Black Mirror. I but Black not, Mirror actually, and Twi- that's one of my, I have oh, not oh, watched. Oh. Mike has been trying to sell me on watching Black Mirror, and I just haven't I will. I will tell you this. As someone who battles with depression and anxiety, not a good show to watch. What? You have yeah. to take... It made me... like. It, it's the kind of thing that like you could show to someone who's upset, and it could push them over the edge. Ooh. It is bleak. It is bleak, 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 bleak. Mm. Like, not even kind of bleak. Um, brutal. Brutal bleak. Um, yeah. Right. Um, but the Twilight Zone show, real quick, just just to end off the thing, they do a meta thing that it's worth the watch through. Just J- Jordan Peele decided I got something good here. They're bringing me in. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something. He did a Shyamalan kind of thing okay. with the final episode, or just a meta thing with the final episode. Where he said, "You know what? I've stuck my landing. I made a Twilight Zone show. I'm gonna have some fun." Mm-hmm. The last episode of the show, the season finale, starts off with Seth Seth Rogen. And he's in a post-apocalyptic thing where he's a writer and he's trying to write a script. And you go, okay, what's happening here? The Jordan Peele comes out and goes, does the you know normal opening thing, and he goes, you know what? No, and you're like, wait a minute, what? And someone yells, cut, Jordan, what's wrong? And he goes, the writing here, this is this is terrible. He's like, and he brings the writer over and he like laces into her about it. He goes, it needs more. Come on, I need you. So she then spends the episode trying to fix the writing, and an episode of the Twilight Zone starts happening with her. Where, like, Jordan's all of a sudden missing, and there's a creepy shape showing up in all the footage, chasing her around. It's amazing. And who it ends up being is, like, if they never made another Twilight Zone, you kind of have to go, good job, guys. Like, because it's a perfect, like, like love letter to the original show. Like, Mm -hmm. it really is. Um, Granted, I think this new Creep Show is better than it. Okay. Because creep show is is just more my my jam. And, and this creep show is exclusive to Shutter. <laughs> exclusive to Shutter. You can get a seven day trial. I think I'm gonna have to do. It's that. worth it. It's All worth right. it. Um, and you know I've seen other things on Shutter, which we can talk about as we go along. But you have had the Daikaiju before. I would so actually like to be the one to present. this. Tell me about the Daikaiju. So this one is again you pre- you you provided this. So. Uh, to Kaiju. On name alone. On <laughs> name alone, I'll be honest with you. And the best part is the people who don't understand the name, because I literally talk to people at work, because, so this is three miles from my house. Oh. I have been... To, How did I find this beer? I just randomly grabbed it. Dude, it's from Bitterford, Maine. Uh, they used Bitterford. To be, Bitterford, it's Maine. Bitterford, Maine. Bitterford, Maine, bub. Um, so they we'll used be to, making frequent stops at Bitterford and the Golden Banana. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, what's his name? Um, uh, Bob Marley. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Uh, so they actually used to be Banded Horn Brewery. Ah, that's... Okay, I knew I've heard of them before. So they rebranded themselves a couple years ago and became just Banded Brewing. I guess the idea was somehow in their head that this was a more like streamlined name. I still think Banded Horn is, is a great a, brewery It's a cooler name. Um, it's hard to see here, but there's like little... Horn drinking Just cups. to remind you but, the, who they so are. So that's what the, their logo sticks with. But again, the kaiju is obviously a throwback to kaiju, and which is giant, large monster movies, which obviously you were a fan of. So. Just bought Godzilla King of the Monsters yesterday because it was my favorite movie of the early part of the year. Why people don't get it, I don't get it. And I am not going to admit that it's bad because it's not. I also have not seen it, but it's very high on my list. I did just see that it's on sale right now. It is now. made for you. I would assume that it would be. Because I love those kind of monster movies to begin with. So I had a tape that I pretty much wore out that my, I convinced my mom to buy me of Godzilla vs. King Kong from Kmart when I was a kid. And yeah, I watched that all the time. This is really good. Yeah. Now, people you know, that heard about this show originally, like, so it's all going to be hoppy beers. And I'm like, no, hop ones, all beers have hops. Mm-hmm. The only things here that don't have hops are the ciders, and sometimes even they do. <laughs> but you no... Know, my original thought was that I'd have to brutalize people with hops to make it more like hot ones, you know. Mm-hmm. But it, I think brutalizing people with all the random flavors is even funnier. Oh, but yeah, this, this, I'm really so surprised. 
every double IPA I've had on this show or I've tried to like prep for the show so far are surprising me for actually being good. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I would tell out there, if, you, if you're watching this and you're a casual beer fan or if you just were here to hear the geeky conversation and are kind of annoyed by the beer part, whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, try double IPAs if you're not a fan of IPAs. Double IPAs, because they have to go with the higher alcohol content, often put a lot more sugary substances in that end up, even though they're a lot hoppier than their counterparts, balance it off with a really sweet kind of flavor. Well, and I will and say, this one is delicious. I will also say that, again, your fans obviously here in New England understand what's going on, but in the other parts of the country, these are New England style. Yes, they are. Double IPAs. So they're hazy. They're hazy. Juicy, as they like to, and 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 that's a good term. It tastes it tastes like you've just bitten to an orange, and it just filled your mouth with flavor. It's a a very strong citrus kind of flavor to it. And again, for California's more into the dry. We hate you, hoppy (laughs) flavor. (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying to remember that there was one of the the particular beers out there. Can't think of the name of it right this second. Their dog is their label. Dogfish head. No, it's they're Maryland. Oh, you're right. Lagunitas. Yes. They have Palette Wrecker. Yeah, I've had that one. I'm, I'm going to get that for the show. Depending on where you want to put that in this lineup here. It, need, it needs to happen at the end. It can't happen early. Because <laughs> 100% it wrecks your palate. And so whatever you drink after that does not taste right. Oh, that's awesome. So, since we spent a lot of time talking about that beer, which is awesome. It's so good. Yeah. I might. You know what? Don't normally do this because I want to be able to function after this. But that one's really good. Yeah. Um, so, what for for the last minute? What's what's something you got on your mind? Well, actually, as we're talking about this particular beer, it reminds me this particular brewery, and I will have to get you one of it. They have a triple IPA. No. Called Session Ender, and the best part is, guess what the label is? King Ghidorah. I want it. I, I want it. Well, There's um. Uh, you were kind uh, enough to get me a particular night, beer night shift. Them? Has a triple IPA called Gravitas, Ooh. which I think is another great name for us. That works. Like we just want to sound like we're pretentious. <laughs> like thanks, Night Shift. I love Night Shift, by the way. I the first time I ever went there was with you. And that when they were in their very sketchy location, where the bathroom was in somebody's unfinished apartment. Yeah, yeah. I did not use that bathroom, but most of the ladies did. And I they did. were very uncomfortable about it. <laughs> that was really really awkward. Um, so. Uh, qu- quick, you know, to end that, or you know, I'll just do it with the next one. So we'll do the head-to-head round for the the blockbuster game during the gross one because it just makes it more fun. But um, oh, for for for, for, for the ectoplasm, we'll do a horror thing. Okay. Um, yeah. Here we go. Um, so. Oh, it's so fucking good. All right. So you are about to have, and I know that you haven't tried this. Um, and the world needs to know. Especially after having that IPA, it's, it's really going to make this thing different than it usually is. This is the ectoplasm. So Halloween, Ghostbusters, all great things. This is made in Salem, Massachusetts, you know, where they hung all those poor young girls and claimed they were witches. Yep. And um, this is far from the tree cider. If you've never been, the place is the shit. They are a weird ass cider. But it's on my list yeah. of uh, places to visit. This is a cider, apple based cider with bell pepper, jalapeno, and kiwi. I smell the jalapeno. And it is fluorescent green. All I can think of is, uh, you know, some Ecto Cooler to go along. It does not taste like Ecto Cooler. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just a little start on that, sir. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Wow. But it's it's all over the place, right? 100% all over the place. Yeah. They didn't fuck around with this beer. People that don't like weird stuff like this. I, I don't say, know this, why. This is, this is the equivalent of the weird beer. This know. is the weirdest thing I've ever drank, and I love it. I would say it's <laughs> definitely up there because it's, again, first of all, the color alone is enough to uh, give you that. Yeah. So, um, back to things that are on Shudder. Um, and I, I'm trying to think if I talked about this the last time with Patrick, because I don't want to go repeating myself. So I'll, so I'll pick something else out um, that I have seen. Um, have you ever seen The Endless? No, what's that? So The Endless is from a uh, a director writer team that also mm-hmm. starred in the movie, and they made this movie called Spring, which I'm actually watching right now. Mm-hmm. Their shtick is like Lovecraftian, weird, like Eldritch Horror type stuff. Okay, but they do it in a very subtle and very um, non non showy kind of a way. Have you ever heard of a movie called The Endless? 
Okay, so The Endless is made, and I don't have the names in front of me because I didn't prepare for this, but it's by a writer-director team, and they actually decided to star in the movie. But their breakout hit, and I think they might have had something to do with a, another movie, too, um, that was not It's a big, like, Eldritch Horror kind of movie. I'll forget the name of it, but Spring, I'm only halfway through, mm-hmm. but Spring, I'm loving. And if it's even half as good at sticking its landing as The Endless did, I'm going to be psyched. But, um, so The Endless... It kind of has... Have you seen Midsommar? Have you heard about Midsommar? I want to watch it so bad. Uh, Midsommar is incredible. Especially if you liked Hereditary. See, and again, have not seen Hereditary. Okay, see Hereditary first. Okay. Uh, Hereditary, I think, is the... It's kind of like with Jordan Peele and Get Out and Us. I I haven't seen Us yet, but uh, I love Get Out. I think Get Out is the better movie, but I think Us is the more ambitious and important film. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. Us just has... uh, Us is so far-reaching. Um... But uh, back to um, the Midsommar and Hereditary, same idea. Hereditary, I think, is a better film. Midsommar is so much more ambitious and so much more layered and so much better for repeat viewings. You catch so much more every time. He was, I don't know what he's on with Midsommar, but he kind of went, hey, people, I bet, you know, everybody likes, you know, a nice lighthearted romp like The Wicker Man. And you kind of go... Wait a minute, what? And what if everybody was on shrooms? <laughs> and you kind of just go, wait a minute, what? <laughs> it's kind of like, what? it's it's incredible. I, I can't decide if Ari Aster is like one of the best horror directors of all time or if he's just super pretentious and film student-y. I can't figure it out. And I don't think he wants you to know. But anyway, The, the Endless is kind of similar to that. It's a couple of guys were part of a cult. Okay. And they escaped from the cult. A friend like helped his friend escape from the cult. And his friend's been getting packages from the cult of like random like passive aggressive VHS tapes. And the friend, the younger friend who has like more of like hasn't fully given up it, wants to go he goes, I need closure, I need to go back and I just need to make sure everybody's okay. They go back and um it gets weird. <laughs> That's literally yeah. the best thing to say. This cult may or may not be stuck in a time loop. Okay. Where like people who wherever they end up get have to like repeat things over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. It's very fucking weird. It's very independent and there's creatures in it, you'd never see them. They're like implied uh, and like done yeah. in like shadow and done in like under the water and stuff in scenes. Yeah. It's one of those things you go back and watch it and you notice stuff you didn't see before. Nice. It's it's great independent horror and um I highly recommend it. And I think it goes really well with um the uh, ectoplasm because it's very gooey. <laughs> <laughs> would be a, a, a good word, way to describe that movie. It's got this incredible shot of a camera getting taken out of someone's hand mm-hmm. and being grabbed by something and lifted up in the air. And that something has got a rope attached to it. Yeah. And you see the characters like fighting, like playing tug of war. And you hear the thing growling, but you never see what it is. And it's like a rite okay. of passage to like lasso this thing, whatever. And I'm like, this is really fucking cool. <laughs> like whatever nice. it is. It, it, it's, it's a really, and spring, spring is similarly strange. And I'm not really sure what it's about yet. Um, and I'm like halfway through. So that's nice. about par for the course with these All guys. Right. Um, so cheers, you don't have any more, huh? Pour that? yourself a little more, if, right. if you like it. I, it's an interesting one. I will have a little more, though. All right. Well, now you're a little bit worried about what you've got. You're, you, should, you, you should be. Okay. And think about it. I have to do this a second time. <laughs> Prepare thyself. So, because I am super, super nerdy, and because we both come from Blockbuster, I have the Blockbuster card game. Have you played it? I have not played it. So, the Blockbuster game is fun. Um, It's awesome. You should get it. I bought my copy from Bend, Oregon Blockbuster. They actually sell it to help make um, profits. Nice. So, it's got a a dual-use buzzer, which I think is really cool. If you tap it once, it counts 10 seconds for the head-to-head round. If you hold it harder, it starts the 30-second thing for the other rounds, which I think is cool. But. What we're going to do is we're going to do the first round of the game because I think it may, it's fun for conversation. Okay. It's the head-to-head round, so you bring out, I'll use one we've already done, movies where there's a race. Okay. You know, so you, you, you flip a card, it just and we have to basically, you have to say something and hit the buzzer before the buzzer goes out, and then I have to say something and hit the buzzer before the buzzer okay. goes out. Nice. So let's let's maybe not destroy our glasses. It's, it's, it's going to make it much harder because of what we're about to do to ourselves. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so so I'm not going to flip anything and hit the buzzer yet, but I'm going to tell you a story. And this story is, you remember Emo Mike? 
Uh, I do remember Mike, Mike Ellison from college. Yes. So Mike Ellison's on a podcast called Adventure Incorporated. Have you ever listened to it? No. It's a Dungeons and Dragons podcast. I actually had them as the sponsor on the last show. His second college, where he went to after UMass Lowell, uh-huh. um, he ended up becoming part of an improv comedy troupe. Oh, nice. And they decided to get themselves back together and to do it. The guy said, I'll be a dungeon master and we'll do a recorded D&D podcast. And Mike... Mike brought into the podcast something he used to do in college. Um, he used to do this to douchey guys at bars because Mike was a straight edge kid. But he'd hang out with all of us who drank. So he used to try to get them to order something that would be disgusting just so he could laugh at them. Remember, these are the guys that would buy yeah. like a Wendy's or a Burger King or a McDonald's value meal and blend it with a and then try to drink it. Yeah. And see, so, so this is about to get Three weird. Story piggyback. I'm just letting you know this is about to get weird. Okay. So on the Adventure Incorporated podcast, Mike introduced it and they said, hey, um, go into the bar and order something, you know, normal to fit in. So, um, so, so they, they, and he goes, all right. So he walks over to the bartender and he goes, I would like a half pour of your finest ale, sir. And the guy goes, yeah, sure. So, so here's a half pour of your finest ale, right? This is Sam 76, just so you oh, know. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> and then he said, um, and w- w- what do you want mixed with that, um, with that beer? And he goes, I'd like you to pour a glass of whole milk into it. And the guy goes, okay, what is that? And he goes, it's a white American. <laughs> <laughs> so um bottoms up buddy <laughs> pouring whole milk uh-huh yeah this seems like a terrible it idea. is it is the worst idea <laughs> so oh i can't believe i'm fucking doing this again i hate you right now. i hate you, you too <laughs> and you know we hate you mike oh you're just gonna put it down in one shot oh no yeah i'm not gonna fuck around on that That's... oh no you know what you know what that's not enjoyable. That's a way better way to do it. Yeah. Why would you make yourself drink it twice? No. No. Because this is my this is my last dab. Yeah, I guess. But the idea is if I... Oh. So, hey, we made it. We did. So, we have our palate cleanser. Yeah, Let's no pull our palate cleanser off. The, it tastes like rotten meat. That doesn't... Yeah, you don't... Okay, so, let's do this. Ready? Okay. Head to head. <laughs> Move! Oh no, we already did that one. All right. Damn it! We already did that one. Who shuffled this? I've been. Why don't you just grab from the? I'm gonna cut it. Yeah, that's probably the best idea. Movies with a long journey. Lord of the Rings. God damn it! Thank you, white American. Yeah. Dude, I'm going to blame that. I, I flashy thing to you. That's yeah, what I did. 100. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's flip another card. That was <laughs> you can start this one. All right. Movies with a baby. Three men and a baby. Damn you. Baby's Day Out. Look who's talking. Willow. Look who's talking now. You can't do sequels. That wasn't shared up front. I know. That's why. That's why I hit it to give you more time. And that's that's the blockbuster game rules, not mine. I'll give you that. Fuck, I'm doing terrible at this. Listen. No, no, no. It's the white American's fault. Right. You know what? Actually, let's use that as a clip. Ready, both of us at the same time. It's the white American's fault. One hundred and ten percent. And that could be used in so many different ways. <laughs> <laughs> um. Movies with a city in the title. Uh, California. That's not a city. I'm already <laughs> failing at this. You can go. Escape from New York. Uh, shit, fuck you. <laughs> Why? Wow, I'm at a loss because... Oh, meet me in St. Louis. Chicago. I've already got one. I'll get there. Detroit Rock City. Yep. Just gonna look at you creepily and not come up with anything. Nashville. You gonna do anything here? I'm I'm <laughs> dude, that I'm I'm having problems. Dude, I, I literally failed on the first few. I'm so having the, problems. This is the moment where I'm just like I'm having problems. The the effects of this terribleness is wearing off. Um what the fuck? Alright, let's do another one. We still have time. Movies with an and in the title. Ooh. Sex, lies, and videotape. Ooh. Cook, 
thief and her lover. Oh, using the right quote, wrong movie. I didn't know that was a thing in your... your... Oh, you didn't know that? No. I actually have that. That's oh, one of the things. Um, love and other drugs. Lock, stocking, and two smoking barrels. Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. Literally, these are dumb things that just should... Like, I'm thinking... I'm trying to, like, see my DVD wall right now and be like, I, you have things with the word and in them. It's brutal, right? Jay and Silent Bob strike back. Okay, next. We still got time, dude. This is fun. Movie set on the ocean. Perfect Storm. Jaws. Damn it. Should have left with that one. Oh. Oh, my stomach is unhappy. <laughs> Deep Blue Sea. The Hunt for Red October. Piranha. Ooh. Ooh. The Meg. Damn it. Shockwaves. Oh, fuck. Awesome. The Abyss. Deep Star Six. Leviathan. Bitch. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Fuck, I cannot think of this thing. Ding, 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 ding. Sphere. Oh. I want more of this one. <laughs> Dude, the Growlix is solid, man. You're not, yeah. you're not doing anything here, right. Dan. I know. I don't have anything. Right. Movies beginning with S. <laughs> Santa Slay. Scream. Scorpio. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Scorpion. Mm. Scorpion King. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, Shutter Island. I feel stupid right this second, as I literally cannot. We've done it, sir. All right. Have you been having fun? Hell yeah. That's mean. That is... But, that is... But, but it makes... you Once you watch Hot Ones, you'll get it. Because the last one has to be brutal. It has to have both people going, why? Why are you doing this to me? Well, he, so... Let me just throw this as a throwback to my hashing... Yes. ...community. So one of the things they love to give people is a thing called Malort. Have you ever had heard of Malort? No. Do we want to let the viewers know or do we want to... Well, Let it be a surprise. The situation is it's not something you can readily get in, in, the, in the North, Northeast. If I had realized that we were going to be cruel to one another, however, I would have brought it down. Well, I was only cruel once. It's true. I will give you that. That was awful, though. It just, just to let everybody know. That's awful. I would like to say that I downed that shit because there was no way that that, lip was, that glass was going to hit my lips a second time. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I, I kept, was doing. On the last show, you haven't got there, and I kept putting it down and going, no, and Pat's like, come on, you Fucking baby, just finish it. I was like, yeah. oh my god. Well, that's, yeah. So, uh, but it is a, it's out of, you can get it out of Chicago. Malort, anyway. But Malort is a weird grapefruit-ish. Oh god. Sort of flavored I'm, I'm, liqueur. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I like it already. Yeah, and it's, it's just potent and mean, but it's one of those things that, to punish hashers, it's a matter of, you need to do a shot of this. Usually we just hand you the bottle and you've got to take a swig and that's how you do it. Yes, that makes sense. Like, um, we had something, um, Zwack. Have you ever heard of Zwack? It's this, no. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's bad. <laughs> and it came in like this orb-shaped bottle. So we, at um, like, uh, beer nights, at my John Victorine, my buddy Vic's yeah. house, we would have someone, and his friend Zeb came out, his, like, oldest friend came out, and did, like, the holy hand grenade event. <laughs> Three shall be the number of the drinking. <laughs> and, and he just did this public service announcement for why you should never drink Zwack. <laughs> it was... The fact that it's called Zwack, Zwack, just tells me I don't want any part of it. Um, so, 
with that, um, we actually did a really good job of keeping time today. I, yeah, you want a little more of that, I I'm do sure. Want a little bit more. This, seriously, the Soul Rad was so super good. For, for, first of all, cheers to you, sir, for being on my show. Thank you so much for having Second me. Second of all, I hope you had a good time. You could tell me if you didn't. But, Absolutely, I did. Um, and just because this is an homage to Hopped Ones, and I'm going to keep saying that so they don't get mad at me, um, because I love that show. Um, you know what I mean? Um, you know, as they say at the end of Hot Ones, this camera, this camera, this camera, that random tiger behind you right there that's creepily looking at you that you probably haven't noticed yet. I did not um, notice that. Tell, tell the world what you're doing right now and say something you might want to say. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Seriously, I am obviously a huge beer drinker. I love drinking random beers, and this has been super fun. And to be able to shoot the shit with my buddy and talk about dumb movies... This is seriously my favorite kind of thing to spend a uh, Sunday afternoon doing. So. so thank you for being the second guest ever on Hopped Ones. Absolutely. And as we have now said starting on the first episode, we kick the fucking keg, motherfuckers. <laughs> have a nice day. Bye. Final sip. Bomb that shit.